Hi, Lisa. I'm Matt. Hey, Matt. Nice to meet you. Thanks nice for joining us. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be with you guys. Yeah, I, I wanted to say, like, uh, Matt, this is Lisa, but I've known you for like five minutes anyway. Right. So not really. Like those... We're all all introducing each other to ourselves. You're, uh, Lisa, your health check passed. You passed. Oh, my God. I feel so much better. <laughs> I was afraid cool. it was SARS. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we were just talking about where I was just saying when you were signing on that uh, it was kind of like getting that physical in high school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you can relate to turning your head. Yeah, well, off. yeah, you probably. Didn't I have know. To. I know what sure. happens. You know, the, it's not as it's not even good for the girls. It's there's no there's no good things that happen from that for probably. either sex. No. <laughs> Probably not, but I, yeah, I remember. I just felt bad for like the doctor that had to check us all out. Just like a line of boys, I remember this. And all right, turn your head and cough. And you know, no one really warmed me up to the fact that I was going to have literally my, warmed my, up. Uh, yeah, yeah, sack grab. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so yeah, we're, we're going like there fast tonight. Well. Might as well, apparently, right? <laughs> Coming in I'm just gonna tour bus <laughs> and then the stack grabbing stuff that doesn't phase me. I can imagine. Yeah, well, we want to hear some of those stories for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how is a well? How is a physical different for girls? And uh, do you remember? Gosh, I can't. You know, I can't remember if. I don't think we had to do it then, but let me just tell you the mammogram thing is uh, not fun. Um, yeah. So afterwards, you know, they squeeze your boob in between some hard stuff and take its picture of a squish boob, flat boob. Mm. Um, that's not fun. So, I mean, yeah, at least you guys might. just get, you know, a hand touching you and you turn your head. Right. Right. I don't I'm, even like when my boobs are grabbed yeah i wouldn't like my boobs right. smashed either no right smashed yeah. and um so it's like a a, a panini yeah <laughs> kind of devices it's a boob like panini. A george foreman yeah so you're oh, hungry press. for <laughs> hungry for pressed sandwiches after the right. procedure right. <laughs> well i could go for some panera you know mm. the <laughs> <laughs> mm, sounds pretty good. So wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> before we get too far ahead, um, welcome, Dandies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very uh, special episode tonight. Um, we are here with the illustrious uh, Lisa Umbarger, uh, former Toady uh, bass player, extraordinary bassist, or bass player. Which one do you prefer? Ah, it's all the same. It's all the same. Yeah. I was thinking about like the term ist doesn't have a lot of good connotations to it. Hmm. You know, like like racist, Marxist, I mean, it's not Marxist, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, Leninist. Yeah. yeah, there's not a lot of, you know, but when it comes to musicians, it's like that's seems to be I, I don't know why that's a go to there. I mean, we don't we don't say like somebody is a carpentist. Yeah, or it's a, guitarist, uh, vocalist, and then drummer. Yeah. Who is doing yeah. that. Um, the bassist. Well, they say guitarist, I guess, but. Yeah. Huh. That's odd. That's, yeah. That is kind of I'm going to have to think about right. that. You're right. Vocalist is Vocalist, asshole. Yeah. Vocalists are always right. the assholes. Okay, right. let's go with bass player. Right. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with bass player. I think all that's right. better. Yeah, I don't want to be right. associated with all those ists. Right. Ists. ists. Yeah. 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 There's some bad ones. <laughs> 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 we'll just let everybody's imagination run with all the is there could be, but there's right. There's some rough ones, you know. It's like, why is that? Why is I that can't think of any good ones. No, no, except for musicians. It's like, well, right. I'm a dentist, maybe. D uh, yeah, but that's you know, yeah. Still, they're yeah, you know, yeah. Dentist is sort of a creepy thing. Hmm. Not something you want to do, you know. Right. You don't want to be dentists, you know, anytime you're like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your thing. And let's just face it. Dentists are just people who wanted to be doctors and couldn't get in. Couldn't get in. Well, yeah. technically they are doctors. They will tell you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Actually, I, yeah. I should take that back. My aunt's a dentist, and she's a fine person. <laughs> there you go. And I think she yeah, chose that profession. She's an we're artist. How about artist? artist? There you go. See, that's not bad. So there, there's yeah. a good ist. That's a good ist. Yeah. You, you, nobody thinks anything foul of an artist. Well. But yeah. Maybe it's just where my mind was going. You know, it's like, you know, racist, rapist. It's like, ugh. I mean, yeah. those things are, yeah. See, hmm. it seems like almost something like you're guilty of doing rather than something you're accomplished at doing. You yeah. know? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's now I like wanna, an accusation. Yeah. I want to look at the origins of adding the ist now. Yeah. I do too. Right. Yeah. I'll have to do that later. I can't do research while I'm talking to you. <laughs> we do it all the time. We do it. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it usually gets edited out. <laughs> With me sitting here, like, and you hear the clicking noises on the, <laughs> on the keypad. <laughs> it's hmm, the origins of, and I talk to myself when I type. That's how it usually goes. Origins of is, because that's how fast I type, too. So Exactly. Yeah. Me, too. I can we play things yeah. faster than I type. <laughs> yes. We need a production assistant. That's what we need. <laughs> that guy in the background. Hey, pull that up. Look at this. We don't have that kind of budget. But uh, like typing was the f- most useful class I think I got out of high school. And I hate, I really don't like saying that. Yeah. But it kind of ended up being the tool that I used the most out of high school. Huh. Honestly. I never took one. Yeah, I just I use the Columbus method for many. You just find one and land on it, and that's. I took I it, and I thought I found their practices to be antiquated, and I like the two finger. Two, I yeah. actually I use four fingers in type, but yeah, I I took the class and learned their method, and then quickly threw it away. Yes. Yeah, I mean all the rules. Don't look at the keyboard. Yeah, it was punk rock typist. Yeah, what's wrong with that shit? That makes sense. <laughs> I can't That's how you. Oh, now no. we've got Lisa's origin story. <laughs> I'm crock typist. They made me type with all my fingers, and I said, "Fuck that! <laughs> I'm gonna be a rock star." <laughs> <laughs> That's how it happened. I was we're like wearing a little Izod shirt and penny loafers, and uh, <laughs> walked right out of the room and bought some Doc Martens. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> So you grew up, um, you grew up Dallas, Fort Worth area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we better we should just say Fort Worth because Dallas and Fort Worth is Fort Worth people and Dallas people do not want to be called uh, the same. Oh no, I mean a faux pas then. Yeah, it's that kind of. I thing. have no idea. Yeah. yeah, so if you say DFW or Dallas oh, really? Fort Worth, yeah, that's so, offensive, it, huh? There's a huge dis- yeah, there's a uh, huge distance in between that uh people don't want to be called that. So if if I said yes, people would <laughs> who listen to this listen to this from Fort Worth, they go bullshit. Fuck you. Are you from Dallas or are you no. from- You're from Fort Worth. So what's the difference, do you think? What's the I mean, I'm um, not I don't know enough about the area though. Yeah, well, Fort Worth is um more of a, a Fort Worth is very conservative. Um, Fort Worth is, uh, um, even though it's huge and has a lot of people, you know, millions of people, it's more of a sleepy town. And, you know, you can get across town in uh, 25, 30 minutes. Dallas is packed full. It's more metropolitan. It's a city. Yeah. It's a city. Um, yeah. Fort Worth does not like to be considered a city, really. It, it, they still um, embrace their rural roots. Uh, no. Even though there mm-hmm. is a big city there, um, it's more um, sprawling and considered more conservative. Cool. So, Classier in their mind, anyway. Dallas maybe. is classier. Yeah. No, Dallas is classier and Fort Worth is we wear boots and Wranglers. We need more roots. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 The real Texas and and sort of Dallas could be anywhere sort of thing, maybe as a city. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you take Dallas and, and stick it, uh, uh, you know, the, the people could be in Chicago or uh, know, San Francisco, any of those places, the people that are in the city. Yeah. Are, I'm using air quotes that you can't see. <laughs> right. 
Um, I don't have the video. Yeah, that's sort of yeah, what I thought like about. That's sort of what I thought about like uh, like uh, people were telling me if you went to Hawaii, you go to Honolulu. I'm like, why? It's just like, you know, I guess if you can see the beach, but it's just a city, you know, anywhere. And yeah. cities are a lot the same. You know, you got your Starbucks, you got your, you know, your corporate buildings, everything else. Like, why not go see what it's really like on the Big Island, or you know, kind of get that yeah. taste of it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah when I went I to Hawaii, I got off. Of, I got out off of. Uh, that island oahu as fast as i could yeah the the real hawaii yeah that's what i hear and then i went there to uh a few years ago you know, my oldest was little but that was that was kind of the feeling i got it's like why would we want to go because we got offers for like go take a puddle jumper over to you know honolulu it's like why would you do that it's just you know here no. we can see the volcano here we can see the the mountains and the horses and the you know right shit. so that's what we wanted to do yeah, the whales in right. January. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I get that. Let's say, what was a uh, middle school, high school Lisa Umbugger into before music? Um, so I played sports. I didn't even start playing music till I was 26. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I worked in a music store. Or so I worked in a, a record store, actually, um, which don't exist anymore pretty much <laughs> right um, now, record so, yeah. stores are coming back yeah uh, they, are. they are here and i'm glad to but, see that i'm so glad no i'm so glad they're coming back but um we all all the Tonys worked at um sound warehouse which is a huge record store mm-hmm. down here but um i played sports so i um i didn't even i loved music and my dad was a musician but i didn't uh, learn to play an instrument or anything i just listened Right. And went to concerts and um, got a job at the record store, um, was still going to college. We were talking one evening. I was educated about music because of my dad. So I was talking with Todd, who's the lead singer for the Toadies. Uh-huh. And um, he just assumed that I knew how to play an instrument. Right. And we were talking and, and he said, uh, hey, I'm starting a new band. I want a female bassist. Um, we're going to rehearse uh, this weekend. Do you want to? Do you want to join? And I said yes. Um, and I got off of work and I called my dad and I was like, "Hey, um, you have two days to teach me how to play bass." <laughs> yeah. and, um, went to a pawn shop the next day and got a bass, got an amp, and uh, the rest is kind of history. My dad yeah. <laughs> had to do crash course and bass. He gave me a, Todd gave me a tape with three songs to learn. Wow. See, that's, that's fascinating to me, though, because it's like, you know, and I, I hear other stories like that, but it's like, you know, people starting off at a band's like, well, and then I just picked up a bass and started, I mean, I, and I'm just telling you from my perspective, mm-hmm. I mean, like, I, I was in a band a, a long time ago in high school and when I was younger, and it's like, I've always kind of uh, fidgeted around with a guitar and noodled around with one, but I never really learned how to actually hold it how to actually play the court, you know, and until like a couple of years ago. And man, I've been, I've been kicking my own ass trying to learn how to play this thing for like two years. <laughs> and I'm still, I'd say I'm low to medium. And I love guitars. I've got like 10 of them for some reason, but I'm not that good. And I'm, I'm just fascinated by anybody who just says like, I want to be in a band. And then they get a guitar and pick it up that fast. I mean, do you think, was there something like you just had a knack for it and you just felt it or, or how did that? Yeah. I, well, I, I think this, I've always loved music. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and it, I mean, when I put myself next to, you know, if I try and compare myself to any other musicians, mm-hmm. um, that would be a complete mind eraser for, I couldn't yeah, do it. You can't do that. Um, it's right. too hard. Yeah. Um, and you know that I would damn myself by doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, Does ooh, it I ever bug you it. like when people do that to you? Like, oh, um, she reminds me of. No, that doesn't bother me when they do it. But if I if, if I get inside my own head and start doing it, it's wrong uh-huh. because I can't read music. Uh, um, yeah, I can't. Either. And for the first two years when I played, I couldn't play anything but our music that we mm-hmm. wrote. Um, and I didn't try and play anyone else's music because I was it was such an immersion course and right. learning. So, you know, now I, I feel like a, 
um, it's not as scary because there were times where I was like, fuck, I'm in over my head. Can right. you say that word? Yes, absolutely. Um, Ab- no okay. fucking way. No. Yeah, okay, absolutely. good. Yeah, get the fuck but, out. There were several times where, where I was like, I'm in over my head. I don't know if I completely thought this out, you know, we're opening up for the chili peppers or yeah. um, something like that. And, 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 you know, I'm playing on the same stage. As <laughs> right. yeah. What and if Flea wants to jam with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Well, several times uh, Dave Navarro came out and played with us uh-huh. and I about crap my pants. Yeah. Um, he can, he can shred. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and he's just, you know, amazing person, amazing guy and amazing guitarist. And, um, uh, I was scared. I'm not going to lie. I was like, holy <laughs> fuck. Uh, what if I fuck up? Or what if he, he's going to like, yeah. yeah. Hey, you guys uh, know any of our songs? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I can play uh, those. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but there, you know, the, uh, there's been several times where people of that level are like, hey, let's jam. And I was uh-huh. like, no. Nah. Yeah. Um, because I was like, wow, what if they find out I can't read music? Right. And freak out. So I kind of um, siloed myself um, uh-huh. in some ways when I was younger. Now it's like I realize talking to more people that I'm not very different from a lot of people. Um, oh, yeah. You just get up and play and do whatever what you feel. And But before I thought that I had snuck in the back door somehow. Um, yeah, you get kind of so that fraud <laughs> feeling syndrome or something like, you know, oh, they're going to find right. out. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're going to know. Yeah. And I've had a lot of people tell me that a lot of artists have that, yeah. that fraud syndrome. Sure. And, and that, like, oh, okay. that happens in other areas too. Oh, right? absolutely. I think, uh, All sorts of careers. You know, um, when I got my master's degree, you know, that I, I don't talk a lot about what I do, but it's one of those jobs that they even warn you, like, you're going to feel like a fraud. All the time when yeah. you really? start doing it, yeah, uh-huh. that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, well, so it, uh, I'm glad though that it's not. It, it was. I'm glad to find out that it wasn't just me, and it's actually a thing. Oh yeah, I, I think it definitely is. It, it's it's in that way in all sorts of careers, and I think one of the biggest things that keeps people from talking about it is just the fact that that feeling that you you know you're going to be found out or whatever. It just prevents anybody from sharing the fact that, boy, for the first five years, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing at all in this job. And, uh, you know, now I'm comfortable with it. And, you know, because you don't want to put anybody off. But, I mean, yeah, no, I can see that. But, I mean, that's also surprising to me when I listen, you know, to, like, Rubberneck. And it's like, you know, she had the swing there. And somebody who knows, you know, or at least listens to a lot of music. I hear a lot of influence in, in there that, like, it seemed like you came from, you know, a, a musically trained background, but it's like, I mean, you were at least pulling it off, but uh, how did you, yeah, how did you kind of get there? Do you think Charles was like helping you out with that? Or I mean, how were you getting to the point where he was like, or you were like hitting the notes and hitting um, the time? Do you think it was just. Todd was an excellent teacher. Um, was that? And, uh, and it, he always used to tell me that, cause I was like, wow, you know, I feel like I, I need to go and take some music lessons and catch up. Uh-huh. And he was like, no, don't do it. I'm yeah. Having, yeah. He's like, I'm having to unlearn what they taught me. Right. And what I like is that you're raw and you're thinking different. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, you know, thinking differently was super important because I would do some things that would be considered wrong. Right. And it worked. So. Um, and that was because I, you know, I listened to music all the time and my, and, you know, my biggest education was probably sitting in the back seat of the car, my dad quizzing me about music. Huh. Huh. Um, and, uh, what did your dad play? My dad played everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, he could, he's one of those guys that really could pick up any instrument and just master it. Hmm. Like here's a tuba and he could play it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, hmm. uh, he so was you- a. He was a music major in school. Oh, I see. Okay. What was your yeah. major, by the way? Business. Business. Yeah. Marketing. Yeah. Did you go back so, to college uh, later or? Uh, no, I just took the, so I went to school on a sports scholarship actually to play softball. Okay. And um, uh, took it slow. I thought I was going to be a doctor or some stupid shit. Mm. And then, um, I don't know. I it, it, I was just tired of going to school and wanted to graduate. So I just picked a major that I could finish fast and I picked business. Right. 
<laughs> I know that really sounds horrible. No, no I'm you're talking. I'm, I'm talking. My undergrad is in theater. Yeah, because okay. I wanted yeah. to graduate. Four years in theater. Right. Yep. <laughs> and well, I remember, uh, like the um, the the toadies were getting ready to be signed, um, and I just been just kind of just keep stay in school so I could stay on my parents' insurance and going to school, going to school, going to school, and um, uh, we. I took the summer off. The Toadies went to California and we played a sh showcase for Interscope, got signed. Mm -hmm. We drove home and I went to my advisor at UTA and, and he was like, so are you going to graduate now? I had enough credits to graduate and I went ahead and graduated ah, a yeah. month after um, we got signed. Well, yeah. I mean, you got to strike when the iron's hot though. I mean, that makes yeah. sense. I mean, you know, take advantage of that. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, and I think we're kind of all from the similar generation of theory that it's like, you know, okay, you get a four year degree, that's just going to bump you up and pay grade or whatever, no matter what you do, you got something to fall back on. It doesn't, yep. and then a lot of jobs, I mean, people don't care. It's just like, a, you know, oh, did you graduate college? Did you go, did you jump the hoops? Did you, you know, do all the bullshit you need to do to get through four years of school? And that's all they care about in a lot of cases. Right. Right. I know there's no way they'd give Matt a job in theater. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't want to give the impression that I didn't love theater. I really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. That. I know. Um, that was my motivation to get a degree was, right. okay, I'm interested in this. Yeah. Yeah. But I know it's not necessarily real world practical either. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only reason I got a history degree was because I would rather write a 30-page paper than do like 10 math problems any day of the week. <laughs> Cause that's the way my, my brain's wired. You know, I was just like, I see algebra and I just panic. And it's like, but I, right. but I, I can bullshit through a paper all day long. I could write you 10 theses before I would do like one tricky algebra problem. Just not, yeah. not in my yeah. blood. So that's what I did. I was just like, what can I do where all I have to do is write and I don't have to do any math. It's like history. <laughs> that's what I went for. You, you were a genius. Yes. So when, when I was picking which major, um, so I knew I was going to do business because it was so generic. You could use it in any, whatever I did, I could use it. Oh yeah. And I picked marketing as my focus because it had the least amount of math. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That was the whole that criteria perfect. for it. Okay. Which one? Okay. Great marketing. I'm going to do marketing. Yep. Now people are doing what they love and. Oh, that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that, how did that go over with your, with your family though? I mean, cause like I talk about this sometimes, you know, like, because we're, you know, Matt and I, I think we're, we're both people who grav gravitate towards performing or art or, or things like that. I, mean, I was always kind of brought up that it's like, well, that's something you do in your, in your spare time and don't make a career out of it. You know, you can, you can you do that if you want to just for fun, but you don't want to sure, you sure don't want to get a degree in it. And so, I mean, how was your family? Were they pretty supportive of you? Like when you were looking at, Hey, you know, I got this off. Yeah. So when I was a kid and wanted to play music, mm -hmm. um, they pointed me in the other direction to do other stuff, which is why I got into sports. Yeah. But, if, um, when I finally just went out and, and, I, I'm in a band. I got to get a guitar now. Mm -hmm. After that, they were really, really supportive. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, after my dad retired, my dad and mom retired, and we were like the Grateful Dead for them because they just traveled around in a minivan oh, cool. and followed the Toadies wow. from, yeah. <laughs> from city to city, and it was awesome. What, <laughs> they had so much fun. What did your mom do? My mom was a nurse. Oh, so was mine. Yeah, my mom was a nurse. My dad um, quit music um, when he was in college. He got his degree and went into the Air Force. And then he started, when we moved here, he worked for General Dynamics and he was in procurement mm. for General Dynamics. Procurement. Yeah. Mm. What's General Dynamics? What do they do? They build uh, fighter planes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We got similar industries here in Missouri. Like McDonald Douglas yeah. was big here. Yeah, yep. A lot of people were employed here uh, with McDonald like my uncle was and stuff like that. So any siblings or anything? Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I have uh two sisters and a brother. And um 
my brother my brother works for DOJ, which is so funny. Really. <laughs> oh wow. And, uh, yeah. And uh uh my two sisters are uh, one of my sisters is retired and uh owns an R V park and the other one uh works in gas and oil. Oh cool. Are they happy? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we're all really close. Good. So we don't have any of that weird family stuff that happens at the holidays. Yeah. Well, and I was going to, yeah, and, and kind of leading up to that, it's like, just, you know, thinking about that. It's like, you can tell a lot about a person, like what happens at their Thanksgiving table when they're like 15. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> what was it? What was the Thanksgiving like at the Umberger household? When you were- um, we all went over to my grandmother's house, uh-huh. which uh, she lived a few miles away. And um, they set up a giant table. Yeah. Like a giant table. And, um, uh, man, everyone came. Everyone. And it was great. There were, you know, there were 20, 30 people. Wow. It was pretty it's awesome. Get together. Yeah. I think I, we used to do that too, I think, a lot more when I was a kid. And I, I, something's dropped off, I think, generationally. We just don't, you know, I mean, I've got, I've got kids and I've got cousins who have kids. We just don't get together like we used to. You know? Yeah. You think that's, Similar. I mean, you get the same thing going on probably there. I or do, do you get to um, see your family a lot more now? And- me or Matt? <laughs> you. You. Matt, do you get I to know see Matt. your family? I, I don't give a shit whether he sees his family or not. It, I, I see <laughs> my family occasionally, you know. I know what um, Matt's doing with his family. I, right. Um, he knows He knows my family. <laughs> actually, you know, John and I's backstory is that he's uh, he was actually friends with my brother for years yes. before we actually mm-hmm. became friends so he knows my entire family Mm -hmm. um it was just kind of a a way life played out john lived in columbia i had just moved to columbia didn't know anybody you know my wife and i really didn't know anybody i knew john kind of kind of you know um and we just kind of started hey we and it worked here we are here we are that's cool here we are probably close to right now really (laughs) <laughs> him and his brother. So, oh. okay. But I was the weird kid that was always at his like Thanksgiving. I was the like odd person out that you know that the, the other family members would be like, "Who in the hell is that weird kid who's not really?" You know, that's John. Um, <laughs> family wasn't really. We doing took in anything. a lot of strays though. Yeah, too. I was. I was we kind were, of a we fortunate kind of the family that took in people. I mean, I could have been with my family. I just didn't want to be, so I went to your right. family. <laughs> it was more fun to hang out with Matt and his family. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or at least be with my friends. So. Well, you know, it's really funny. You know what I said about Dallas and Fort Worth? It's mm-hmm. not very far away. It's, you know, takes me 45 minutes to get to Fort Worth. I live in Dallas. Okay. Um, but it seems like an ocean away sometimes. So all my siblings live over in Fort Worth. Oh, yeah. Um, and, or just west of Fort Worth. And um, uh, we see each other not very often even though we're still close we talk on the phone so even though <laughs> even though weird? they're so so close yeah, yeah it's it's really so weird weird you're so um, close and you don't hardly see him yeah but we like i said we talk on the phone and i still feel like we're pretty close um supportive so good we have phone conversations quite a bit oh, that's good well, that's good oh, that is good yeah they're pretty good people yeah so you're working in uh, what you sound warehouse. Was it uh, early nineties, late eighties, something like that? Late eighties. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was working at the uh, sound warehouse. And then I went to, after that, I went to go work at the Y and I was a camp counselor at the oh, Y. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any good stories from that or <laughs> probably none oh, you can God. tell. <laughs> Yeah, probably probably shouldn't. Probably <laughs> it was it was good. It was good. Well, there was one, uh, you know, because there you have to come up with activities for the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, we were doing a camp counselor. I was director of the camp at one time, and I was like, let's have a tug of war with uh, camp counselors, so the kids could root us on and uh. all this stuff. And um, and I had a gig that night, and was going to leave a little early, but I would do this tug of war first and then um, go. And then, uh, so we were doing the tug of war and somehow my hand got caught in a rope. Oh, goddamn. And, oh, no. Um, yeah. Nothing bad going to happen today. 
<laughs> you know. <laughs> you crush my right hand. Oh, shit. It's a, a, after a lot of curse words in front of the little kids, <laughs> you know, I was trying to get everyone to let go of the rope yeah. and ease it up. Um, went to the doctor and he was like, yeah, it's really bad. Man. It's really bad. We're going to have to put a cast on it. It was like, oh, oh dang. I, was got, I have a show tonight. Oh, no. And it was like three o'clock and sound check was at eight. Yeah. And I was like, um, well, dang. So I had him, I I always carried a pick. And this is like a weird guitar player, bass player thing. Yeah. So, I've um, so I had a one. pick in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I had a pick in my pocket and I had him put the pick in the cast <laughs> thing so I could play that show that night. It was the most painful oh, show ever. Oh, God. Had a hard didn't life. Miss wow. the show. You just fucked up your hand <laughs> recently, too, didn't you? I think I saw on Facebook that, yeah. 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 You slammed in the door or something? Slammed it in the door. Yeah, I was like trying to herd the dogs in yeah. out of the rain. Yeah. And um, one of them was coming in with muddy feet, and I was trying to grab a towel to wipe their feet off, and somehow in that clusterfuck slammed my hand in the door and messed up my God damn. knuckle. <laughs> so Jeez. that felt good. Uh, how, many do how many dogs do you have? Four. Four. Wow. Mm -hmm. What kind? We have two fosters. We have two pit bull fosters. And then I have a um, foster failure. I have a blind puppy, poodle oh, puppy. No. Um, but I kept him because he's just awesome. Yeah. And then I have a wire hair terrier. All right on. Cool. Matt's taken in a lot of uh, um, rescues and yeah, like we've, that. We've taken um, quite a few in. Quite a few in. I'm actually I'm. Sort of a, I mean, I love dogs. I have dogs, but minor Boston Terriers is just it's always what I've gone for. Just my favorite mm -hmm. dogs. I've got, I do have one now, though, whose 14th birthday just came and went. I mean, for, for a snub nosed dog, that's that's getting up there. He's he's blind Aww. too and and deaf. Um, and I think he has Alzheimer's. A lot of times he'll like go outside and come back in and then turn right back around the kitchen island and go back to the back door like he forgot that he just went out. <laughs> he do that yeah. about four or five times every time he goes to the bathroom and then it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, I just oh, went yeah. I'm good now. Yeah, I forgot, but I mean, I don't know. <laughs> this would be the first one I've had. It's, it's it, yeah, kind of an unfolding tragedy right now, but it's like, he he's going to be the first dog I think I've had that didn't like die from some accident, like getting hit by a car or Oh, getting getting sick when they were young or so it's like in some ways when the bandage gets ripped off when the, when a dog just dies tragically it's it's real sad but it's like watching them deteriorate too it's also hard in a totally different way you know yeah and it's like oh it's it's grueling but you know he has a younger sister though that oh, i guess it's going to be the replacement oh uh, then yeah <laughs> We she still got some chilling to. Oh, she's got a lot do. of chilling to do. She's yeah, <laughs> insane. I love dogs. Yeah, I've always had dogs in my life, and I just I always will. I always have to. I don't think I've did. I yeah, my whole life. I don't think I've never not had a dog, or I thought they've always had a dog. And I thought that was kind of the thing with my kids too. It's like every kid needs a dog, you know, yeah. be their dog. And so we've always made sure that you know. Kind of as the kids have grown up, they've always had a dog. I, I don't know what we'll do when we lose these two. I, I think we'll probably get another one. We're just dog people. Gotta have more. Yeah, yeah, we are too. Yeah. I mean, I've had a I had a Yorkie that lived to be twenty five. Wow, that's a good wow. Mm. Jesus Christ, that's like one hundred and fifty. Blind and deaf. <laughs> <laughs> it is. He like, had a good life. He knew it too. Yeah, that. <laughs> Wow. Man, when they get that old, you would just have like 10 years of, is it today? Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. Because, no, I mean, we've got it. I kept going, shit, I think he's going to live forever. He's like a vampire. Yeah. Because he was <laughs> blind and deaf and just like was the happiest dog in the world. Wow. Did not care. He was awesome. <laughs> yeah. John and I talked about that because my dog, my older dog, is about the same age as John's. Right. And, yeah, we're we're kind of both at that. Okay, are they sleeping or are they dead? Yeah, you know, and it's <laughs> kind of an there. everyday thing. Yeah, they have to walk you know, up just and like because they're getting up there, nudge the dog pillow. It's like no, <laughs> you, you don't want to wake him, but it's like he hasn't moved. I can't 
like tell if his little rib cage is going up and down or not. It's like, you know, you nudge it and it's like five times. And finally he's like, what? It's like, oh shit, sorry. Yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> All right. Okay, go back to sleep. <laughs> I'm bury that hole in the backyard. <laughs> right. yeah. Oh yeah. No, no. It's coming. It's sad though. <laughs> Let's see if it's good. Thanks for being a downer. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just <laughs> no, I mean, it's 14. No, it's 14 years. 14 good years, right? Yeah, it is. It is. It totally like I is. Say, it's the longest time I've ever had one. So it's, yeah, a lot of memories yeah. and everything else. So that's, that's really good. Yeah. Mm. I, <laughs> I have a, my oldest dog now, she is, the, the wire hair terrier is nine. And when her, uh, face started going white. I was just like, oh, oh. yeah, that's the my other dogs. I couldn't see it as much, and with her, I can really see their faces white. Right, the mask. I was like, yeah, I used to stop that. yeah, stop it. I don't like it. Yeah, that's when it comes out. Same thing that came in with with Archie, my oldest. Just like the the white mask just starts popping up, and then the kind of glaze with the eyes of the cataracts, and it's like, yeah, especially yeah. hard with these kind of dogs, these Boston's, because they just look. They're just black and white. They're cut and dry dogs. You know, they just look. You know, they don't really age until that white hair just all of a sudden. Well, hell, the same thing's happening to me. Look at my beard in the morning. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> it's like, oh, damn. <laughs> Start plucking those things about five years ago, two, three. It's like, now I have to pluck all of them. Yeah. I wonder if that's why they jump on me in the middle of the night, see if I'm still <laughs> alive. Poke the bed. Oh, she hasn't moved in a few hours. <laughs> well, Did you see her hair? <laughs> I think we're close. I, I think with mine, it's more like you haven't fed me in half an hour. Right. <laughs> Where's my um, treat? Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dad's old. We don't care. Where's my food? <laughs> <laughs> my kids know better. <laughs> He's right. absolutely. Dad, I need a snack. You just a <laughs> nope. nope. <laughs> hungry, hungry. I am hungry. Yep, we get that a lot. Well, you can have some carrots since you just <laughs> ate. Yeah, I'm not hungry yeah, for I'm that. Not hungry for carrots. But you're not. I want your Philly yeah. cheesesteak. Yep. <laughs> no, he would not. <laughs> That's what I want. That's how I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now he's staring at me. I think you he heard us talking about him. Uh, totally, yeah. damn. Well, he's deaf, though. I don't think he can. <laughs> That's a weird thing, too. Deaf dogs. I've never had one of those either. And he lost his hearing just about a year ago. And it's doing like trying to figure out it was something I never thought I'd have to figure out. It was like dog sign language because there isn't any. And it's like, you mm -hmm. know, most of the floors are like hard service. So I have to like stomp on the floor and point at shit. And like, <laughs> you know, this way you're trying to communicate to a dog that's always listening to commands. It's all like, it's like now you use your hands and you realize pointing is like all you got, you know, <laughs> but you still probably say the words right. because you're of course. Just and louder, you know, just <laughs> even though, you know, that doesn't work with people. You do. <laughs> Archie, no, Hey, stop. Yeah. It doesn't work. It doesn't care. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, he's had a good yeah. Yes. Are you strictly dog person? Do you like cats? Yeah, you got a cat or I do like cats, but I don't have any right now. I have, um, I had um that Yorkie that that grew to be very old. Uh, we got a kitten, a rescued feral kitten, um, when he was just a puppy, and he would carry that kitten around by the nape of its neck yeah. like a mama kitty mm -hmm. so he thought we got him a cat <laughs> oh boy nice and uh so the kitten became like a dog so we called it a cog because it was just not a cat right mm -hmm. it would beg for food it would come with the dogs and beg for food uh, and it would and go outside with the dogs it was a dog uh, we had a weird cat I, yeah all my cats have always been weird and i've always done that i've always gotten like you know feral cats or adopted cats just from off a farm that just bred too many or whatever and barn cats, mm -hmm. you know, that's usually what we pick up. Never paid for one. Um, it's a crapshoot though. Them cats, man, they're, whew, they're yeah. crazy. Everyone I've had has been completely <laughs> insane. Um, I'm convinced. <laughs> I, I had a cat, just the, the one before this cat that it 
kind of a funny story. We took it to the vet and like hadn't gone to a vet in like a year. We nursed it back to health and everything. And he looked at it and this old school vet, he was, you know, he had kind of a, a potty mouth and everything. So he was a funny guy. He was like, John, I don't think this is a, he's like, this is barely a goddamn cat. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I think he's got a chromosome missing or some shit. He's like, it's, it's eyes aren't like, right. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, uh, he's like, you see, it's got like a, you know, I don't know. It's like these, it doesn't have like the biology of a cat. I don't even know what the hell I'm looking at. I'm like, really? It's a, it's a cat. It's a cat. It's getting like, no, it's not a cat. <laughs> yeah. He's like, this is <laughs> barely like physiologically. This is barely what a cat is. He's like, hey, does it have problems? I was like, yeah, it's got serious problems. I and mean, it did. It would like, yeah, it would just do weird shit, you know, make strange noises and like would, you know, run across the floor with its on its back, just scratching its back like a dog would, but just and make like a weird clicking noises and shit. It was just, it was really bizarre. Everybody who saw it just like, the cat <laughs> behaves just so strangely. He's like, yeah. Doc says it's not really a cat. We don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever it is. It's, a, it's an undiscovered we species. It, we named it Chupacabra. <laughs> right. It's an undiscovered species. Something sort of related to a cat. Should have seen if I could have named it something. Could have had a name that for me. <laughs> yeah, that one unfortunately just disappeared. Completely disappeared. Well, maybe it went, went back to its home planet. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe it had to shed its coat and <laughs> molt. And, <laughs> it's probably not. Yeah, it's, it was time for the metamorphosis. <laughs> probably now an insect living in that house somewhere. Yeah, nice experiment. Yeah, fucking weird now. Weird out. <laughs> yeah. So you guys <laughs> back onto any subject at all. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you guys speaking should, of weird, <laughs> weird. What are some of your good yeah. w- weird road stories? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I like that. Man, tour. Man, there's so many. Um, my favorite one, one of my favorite ones, were um, so when we were out on the road, um, we had hair clippers, and I would shave Todd's head. Um, not like completely shave, but you know about an inch give them just like a buzz cut right. with uh clippers because it was cheaper than going to get a haircut right. and um when we we're out on tour with bush um they used to throw us out of backstage um as soon as we got off oh, bush did. even in the, like the biggest venues there because they uh, were afraid that americans would nick their stuff oh, g- shit so, really really yeah wow. so we, we couldn't even sing in our green room they would throw us out and so um, we were out on the street and it was in Detroit and we were just hanging out uh, by our tour bus mm-hmm. and um, we ran the clippers out the bus window <laughs> uh, with an extension cord and we were, we uh, ha- made a sign that said free haircuts. And nice. people that were coming out of the show, we cut their hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. We shaved their head, basically. Not a haircut. It was a shaved head. Oh, they have cell phone <laughs> so, cameras back then. Oh, that would have been... Did it go, like... I guess you couldn't really go viral no, at, that at that time, but... point in time. But I, I could imagine yeah. that getting some <laughs> notoriety. Right. It was fun. So there was just, like, people lined up around the corner, and we were just, like, shaving our heads. <laughs> we, got, we got a chair out, because um, there was a security guard that was sitting by the door, and we're like, can we borrow your chair? And he's like, yeah. You slap people down, just shave their heads. Right. Were you were you tempted to shave anyone's head in their sleep? <laughs> never do that. Um, gosh, you know we never did do anything no like that because I think we we were yeah we were pretty good with each other. Uh-huh. It was other people that we would so we were kind of off limits. So we didn't do like fraternity things where we draw a penis right. on someone's <laughs> face. When they were passed out, so that was always kind of sacred. We took care oh, of each good. other, but um, anyone else, yeah, <laughs> some other band stuff would happen to them. Yeah, yeah things would happen to them. <laughs> we took out our aggression on them, oh. not us. <laughs> and it was kind of us against them anyway. We kind of had that mentality, that punk rock yeah, mentality. Yeah, to be. Yeah, I yeah. to keep 
keyboard. And they said, well, I mean, things were so, I mean, up in the air back then, I think was, you know, big thing. And, uh, you know, with, with a lot of bands just trying to, just like that whole era, it seemed like the music in general was, was getting away from people and people didn't know what to categorize anybody as and what to, you know, I saw like yeah. some of the the bands that you were touring with. I mean, so you guys, you guys played with everybody from like Lemonheads to Fugazi. I mean, how, how do you get yeah. that sort of yeah. range, you know, or is it just because they couldn't find anybody to like really pit you with? Well, and I, yeah, that's exactly what happened. So they, they, um, you know, we, we toured with white zombie yeah. on a long tour too. And, um, I, you know, I don't know how much crossover happened. I think Bush probably was easier because some of their fans would like us. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there was one show that we played in L.A. and the Circle Jerks got back oh, together. Oh, wow. Oh, and wow. Everyone, everyone kept saying that we were punk. And I was like, eh, we're not punk. We act like assholes, <laughs> but we're not, we're yeah. not punks. Um, we're, and we don't play punk music. And they're like, we're, we're going to put you on this punk bill. So it was the circle jerks and all, you know, that's the only one I can remember, right. but it was a bunch of punk bands and I was so stoked because I loved the circle yeah. jerks. Um, and um, so the whole time we went on like right before the circle jerks and there was all these really aggro punk bands that people were fine with. And there was a mosh pit. And then we went on and um, there was this girl, I will never forget. There was this girl that was hanging off the balcony, this theater in LA and she was hanging on, holding on with one arm off the balcony and with the other arm was pointing at her butt <laughs> yelling, suck my ass. <laughs> and it was so loud. It was louder than our amps. Nice. And I was like, oh man, they hate us. I was so excited about playing with the circle jerks and they, they hate uh -huh. us. And um, we got spit on. Um, actually, by we... Not me. The boys got spit uh, off. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they were really nice. <laughs> they gave you the courtesy. Very polite. <laughs> of not yeah. spitting on them. Because yeah. I was the girl, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get there spit was... on. But um, Todd walked over and he had this huge green loogie hanging off oh, of the ah. screen. He was looking at me and he was going, oh, hell. Yeah. And he was like, how do I get this <laughs> off? Because I knew he was going to have to slide down to uh, it. Oh, no. And, um, and he was, he was like, I don't, he was like trying to shake it off and wipe it off and he couldn't get it off. And finally the part <laughs> came where he had to slide and, and he slid and he, I saw him gagging. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was so oh. awesome. <laughs> That's... He had to take uh. his hands. <laughs> <laughs> That reminds so me. Yeah, different, different kind of fan. Well, in yeah. some circles, it's a you know, it's a compliment too. It's it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, they didn't mean it. That, that wasn't way. a compliment, though. You don't think? No, no. they because they were yelling things that yeah. was not complimentary. Like <laughs> you guys, rock, woo. it was not that, mm. and no, there was no mosh pit because we weren't moshable right hmm. so they stared at us and spit <laughs> I don't know. john and i lived in this town and this was before that we were hanging out we lived in springfield missouri, missouri. missouri. there not um mm -hmm. and simpson yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where the simpsons live that's, that's a running joke uh, for a but, lot of bands that come through by the way yeah there, where's bar so uh, yeah, they, they did that a lot <laughs> blaine staley did that to us yeah like probably four or five times when Alton right. like, hey, where's homer <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah it's, yeah it's funny but they were, heard it <laughs> it was a little bit you know they didn't get a lot of stuff but i think it was kind of there was kind of like this interesting like they would try a marsh and i'm not shitting you uh, I went to a Counting Crows yeah. show in Springfield, and they tried to mosh <laughs> at Counting Crows. Mm. And Adam Duritz finally had to kind of like stop the show and be like, "Yeah, you can't do yeah. that at a Counting Crows <laughs> show." Like the hardest thing we play is Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jones, and they're slamming yeah, into each other the because thing. they're so like desperate. Yeah. But what was fun about going to shows there is when like the bands um, that were just kind of a little more hardcore would come in. Oh, yeah. Like the the obvi the audience was just like ravenous. Oh yeah, for it. Like they, and you would oh, see that's... like all of these. And I, and I this was actually something I was thinking about asking you tonight. And like, if you noticed any kind of 
Like, was there an energy for like some of the more like backwater, like less played places? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Did you ever notice anything like that? Yeah. So that whole um, uh, white zombie tour was well, not the whole thing. The second leg of the white zombie tour was all up in the northern regions, like North Dakota. Uh- and all these little podunk town, we played hockey yeah. arenas where they actually put stuff down on the ice and um, uh, they had never had bands play there. And I thought it was cool that Rob Zombie wanted to go to these places where nobody yeah. came through. And um, so that whole tour was that way, but we were, um, which made the fans like us because they were just happy for mm-hmm. music. So that worked on that leg of the tour. Um because people were starved for music and it was awesome. Um, I had so much fun on that tour and it was packed and everyone from, you know, a holler away was yeah. there. So, um, and yeah, it was, it was so much fun and, and playing those, uh, ice rinks, we could, you know, the hockey arenas, we could, um, they had practice ice. So we all got to oh, skate. Cool. I brought my skates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I brought my skates on that tour. Cause we got to skate, um, uh, before the show. So, so I know like a uh, hockey, yeah. uh, one of the big things I remember too, just about seeing you when I was younger and stuff and seeing you videos and the, and, and, Oh, it, it's kind of a shame. We don't have video. I am wearing my hockey sweater. Um, you know, homage yes. to you tonight. Now it's a, it's a Chicago Blackhawks sweater and I'm sorry. Um, that's, no, I'm okay. That's one of the original yeah, six. It's just where good. I'm from. So, I mean, I, I always say like Chicago sports is is sort of like being a um, it's sort of like being secularly Jewish. It's like it, you may not go to synagogue, but <laughs> you're born there, so you, you're born of it. So it's just like you you have to follow like Blackhawks, Cubs. You know, you don't have a choice. And uh, whether you like them or not, it's like a, it's been hard living in Missouri with Missouri sports. They're also very fevered fans I, i'm sorry about the the dallas stars by the way i, mean, it's, I was i was born oh, for no. you we didn't expect to make it in I, I was too we didn't expect to make it into the playoffs because yeah. it's been so long <clears throat> so to go that deep was was pretty yeah that was pretty special yeah. i feel um, that way as a cubs fan so i wish we would have i wish we would have won but dang it um so i'm just a i'm a hockey mm. fan so i'll continue to watch um so, you know, when we played the um, – we're on bigger tours and went through cities. It was really cool because I got jerseys. Yeah. So, the you know, mm-hmm. the PR people would – I'd show up to – you know, and I got a Blackhawks right jersey on. when we played um, – what is that place? United mm-hmm. Center? I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. United Center. You know, and I got an Avalanche. I have a Blues jersey. So – um but you know, we'd show up and and I'd get jerseys, which I was stoked because I would watch yeah. the games, and and you know that was a good time for Dallas hockey because we were winning, but uh, and a good team back then. But I I love did you hockey. play? I love the hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. In fact, I had to stop when we got signed because I broke oh. my tailbone um, playing. Mm. So I stopped. But I'm, so it's not just the jersey; it's uh, it's uh, part of your. I mean, you you like play and always follow yeah. it and stuff. Hey, are the stars your are the yeah, stars your team? Uncle, really, that all and all, you think? Yes, yeah. definitely. Yep. Yeah. Um, my uncle was in the Red Wing system. Ah. Uh, so all right on. Uh, all right on. So we kind of have some hockey in our family, and then when um when we were recording Rubberneck. Fort Worth got a team. It was a very, very mm-hmm. minor team. And as soon as I heard they got a team, I uh, called my dad and said, you got to get me a jersey because we're going to get pictures taken. I want to wear a Fort Worth jersey. And um, somehow my dad got his hands on a jersey, and that's what I wore for the What's the Fort Worth team? For Rubberneck. The Fort fire. Worth Fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're no longer around. Uh, now it's the Fort Worth Brahmas. Mm. Well, yeah, at least you got one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Man, minor league hockey is fun. I love going to watch minor league yeah. hockey. 
I like I like minor league sports in general. Just I mean, like we've got a minor league uh, baseball team here. Um, so the Springfield Cardinals. Uh, those games are always I mean, much more fun, more much more accessible. You get swag. You get like you know free shit all the time when you go, and the fans are much more hyped. It seems like, and those guys want to play too. Yeah. You know. Yeah, we have a we have a couple minor league baseball teams around here too that are fun yeah. to watch. Cool. Uh, yeah, I didn't know how much of that was. I mean, I know it's like a an iconic eight years sort of your kind of signature look and stuff with it with the hockey. So where does that come from? Is it just just from that one video? You know, it's really funny. You no, know, so I got the Fort Worth Fire jersey because I just want to represent Fort Worth because mm-hmm. everyone was like Dallas, 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 and and we were we were very adamant about saying that we're from Fort mm-hmm. Worth. Because when we first started, Dallas wouldn't even give us the time of day, and we couldn't even get a gig yeah. in Dallas. Mm. Um, so we, you know, it, it was just kind of me like throwing shade on Dallas, right. and so I was like, right, I need for throwing you shade." Yeah. So, um, so I got the Fort Worth Fire jersey, and um, so we would go out and play, and people were like, "Where's your hockey jersey?" Uh. And I'm like, <laughs> "What?" And so I didn't know it was my thing until people asked, <laughs> right. and so I was like, "All right, I'll wear a hockey jersey." Or like, well, give me a hockey jersey, yeah, and then so on. people started bringing me jerseys or giving me jerseys. So I started just wearing them, which was fun with me because yeah. I love them. Well, I, I honestly, mm. I looked into how many do you have now? Mm. How many sweaters? The yeah. oh god, um, I got rid of of a lot of them, but God, I had more than fifty wow. when I came off the tour because I got I got minor league ones too because I got the lumberjacks. And I got. Um, the Chicago yeah, the wolves, wolves. Yeah. and the wolves are cool, man. The, their jerseys, um, the yeah. eyes glowed on the jersey, so it, like, oh, nice, <laughs> awesome. So, I got you know, just a bunch of really cool jerseys, and, and I, um, a couple I've kept that are super special, like all the, the fire ones and the stars. And, um, I have a um, uh, someone gave me a Nordiques one, so I have a Quebec nice. Nordiques. Um, and, and I got um, Montreal Canadiens because the GM for the Stars, um, I became friends with the Gainies when they were here. And he's he played for the Canadiens and was, and you know, he's in the Hall of Fame. And I became friends with their family. And um, in fact, when the Stars won the cup, I got to touch the cup. I got to hang oh, out nice. with the cup. Really cool. Um, but uh, um, I got a Montreal canadians jersey from them which is cool sweet so that carried you pretty far even though you weren't really expecting it to <laughs> amount to anything yeah uh, yeah it is like yeah iconic. it was just like another thing i noticed like yeah, from back then it's like and like i say just looking back in, in my own memory it's like you know, who's that gal with the hockey sweater and she's got that bass strung like so low where did that come from just having that bass slung so um, low that it's like God, it's like a foot off the ground um, when you do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I, maybe because I love the Ramones. Yeah. But um, it was it's easier for me to play. Like, so I play with a pick mm-hmm. and I grind into the string. So if I have it lower, it's easier to get a different tone. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. So it's actually a tone thing. Um and it, um, cause I started playing it up higher and I just couldn't do it. It was harder. It was harder on my wrist and I can keep my wrist straight and dig into oh, the strings. Without like cupping your hand up. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah. I tried it earlier. This cause week. usually you hear it the other way around. It's easier to play up high, but it doesn't look cool. Yeah. That's what I've heard. That's what I was low. wondering. Cause I've heard people say that. It's like, yeah, that's just yeah, nice. save my wrist. Huh. That's weird. As I tried that yeah. myself. I got, I took my own bass down off the wall. Like, couple days ago i was like i'm trying to sling that thing roll out it's like that's impossible i can't do that shit <laughs> like what, what, how did you figure that out? but yeah i guess it makes sense i mean just with your you know your stance and everything else and you know but yeah 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 uh, it's it's uh, man like pretty i don't think in fact i still have the first guitar strap that i started playing mm-hmm. with and it's pretty much the same really? i know i haven't changed i haven't huh. moved it so, so uh, the uh, <clears throat> the new cats that you're playing with now to get off toadies because I really want to yeah. uh, plug this. 
Um, I think you guys are really great. Uh, Urban Gypsy. Um, yeah, actually, that's not going to okay. be our name. So this is really Ooh, this is really, breaking news. Um, <laughs> we got yeah. breaking news. Cool. Yeah. So uh, when I was in San Francisco um, for mm-hmm. work, and I got this weird message, this Facebook message um, from uh, Madison Winchell. And Matt used to play um, uh, drums for the Toadies way back in the day. And he was like, hey, um, I'm in this new band uh, with my fiance, and we cover a few Toadie songs. And Charles, the original guitar player yes. for the Toadies, is hopping on stage and playing. And we're just wondering if you would want to. And um, I was at the bar. It was at a bar drinking. And I God. saw that. And I was talking to some people and I was like, should I do this? Yes. And they're like, yeah, fuck yeah. And I was like, all right. So um, I said, yeah, okay. I'll um, call you when I get home, uh, get back in town. And um, so I did. And we all got together and we were going to play two jump up and play two Charles and I were going to jump up in between an urban gypsy set and mm-hmm. play two songs, two Cody right. songs. And, um, I missed the hell out of Charles. Charles left right before we got signed. Um, oh, yeah. I always hated that he left, even though I love Daryl, but you know, Charles was there from the beginning and he was one of my buds and I really did hate that he left. left. Um, and so we started talking, we're like, let's, get together and play again. That was really fun. Let's start writing. We both have a lot of music. Let's do it. So we were going to put a band together and um, we had another commitment to play another urban gypsy show. So we played another one and I started talking to Charles mm-hmm. and was like, we kind of already have a band. Do we want to go through the whole thing about Craigslist and putting out ads right. and trying to find dudes? Um, when we actually have these people here that are pretty buttoned down and we like, so we asked, um, urban gypsy and I didn't want to break up their band. They already had a good, they already had a bass player and, um, and they had a keyboard player and all these things. And, and so I approached Charles and I approached Matt and, um, he's like, we don't want to do this. We're getting ready to fire those dudes. Do you want to? you know, we would be down for doing this. And I was like, okay, we didn't want to break up your band. So if that point is moot, we're good. And, um, so we had a couple of other obligations we had to take care of, which someone heard that we were playing some shows and asked us to play some shows that were, um, benefit shows. So we did those under urban gypsy, but we are now officially a band. We have, we, uh, are going in the studio next oh, month. Sweet. Actually, wow. the end of this month, beginning of next month, and um, and we'll release the name. We're still um, fighting. No, not really fighting, but we're still right. debating on a name. We have a couple. We have a couple names we're leaning back into and and seeing which one we can all agree on. But um, yeah, this is going to be cool. a thing now. And I'm so I, I love these guys so much, and it's yeah. Fun. It seems like you're having fun from everything I see on. And your social media and stuff looks like you're having a good time. Yeah. So, uh, what about uh, is Jennifer Elizabeth still going to be a part of this new thing? Cool. Yep. How did you? Yeah. How did you yeah, come across her? She's got a, she's got a great voice, just beautiful voice. Uh, how did you come across her? And was she just the part of the original Urban Gypsy crew? She's part of Urban okay. Gypsy. Um, she and Matt are getting married in right. So okay. okay. All right. So yeah. that's how that yeah. works out. So. Um, package deal and it was a pretty darn good package uh to, you know those two together so the lineup the lineup is amazing be the same. Lindsay and stevie yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you know they write and and matt was in pimpadelic too um oh, okay. little known fact about him so you know after he left the toadies he's at he's been in two successful bands so you know none of this is is new and and now it's just mm-hmm. all for fun and um yeah, I feel like like and this really sounds cheesy, but I feel like we've we're kind of in a renaissance because we've all gone out yeah. and done other things. And um, I was totally retired. I had not touched my bases in yeah. years, and was not doing anything. And um, you know, when I retired from the toadies in '02, bases went in storage. Sold oh, really? most of my gear. Um, sold most of my bases. Mm-hmm. I kept two, and um. I thought I was done and 
um, yeah. So, well, it's kind of, uh, wow, that almost sounds, and I don't mean to um, imply anything, but it almost sounds like that's, I, I'm done, done. That's like breakup type <laughs> yeah. reaction to something. Is there, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. was it that painful? I guess is what I was asked. Uh, well, oh, yeah. yeah, it was, it was, um, it was, yeah. It, it it started off. I thought the that the me leaving was going to be, um, everything was going to be all right. It was going to be kosher, and then it just got really, yeah. it got really nasty. Um, and you know, we wrote a press release together as a band, and then Todd decided not to release that and just went yeah. on a rant to the press, and it was just yeah, that acrobatic yeah. stuff is just never good. I mean, it, those aren't good times. Yeah, that's and, tough. <laughs> Like I said, I, yeah, I don't want to pry in that area. Nor do I. Yeah. So we, yeah, yeah, everybody has yeah. Right I'm still friends. Yeah. You're still friends. I'm still friends yeah, with really uh, the other good. guys. Well, that's good to hear. That's good. Um, but uh, you know, I've several times reached out to Todd because I felt like it was, you know, wow, probably enough water's gone under the yeah. bridge. We're probably okay, mm -hmm. and it's it's yeah. not. Um, in fact, I went to one of their shows. I got thrown out of one of their shows right after yeah. that. Oh wow! Uh, where they like escorted me out because I wasn't allowed in. And then um, not like you were making a scene or anything. I guess that was last year. I went there. to a show. Ugh. No, I just was at yeah. a show like a like a regular paying audience member. But uh, they played here in mm. Dallas at a big radio festival and one of the djs was like hey do you want to go and i was like sure and he gave me tickets and backstage pass were you wearing, uh, the, were you wearing the hockey jersey you probably saw that <laughs> no no yeah. incognito you're not hiding and, uh, <laughs> and uh i they uh they sh they threw everybody um, out of backstage even the radio people because they found awesome. out that i was there and i was like all right that's cool i was just gonna I wasn't gonna do anything. Was you know? Wasn't gonna cause shit. I was just gonna say, Why? right. So yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, that yeah, that sort of thing has to happen. I don't know. I mean, I, when I was in a band, I mean, yeah. I think that was probably the hardest thing is, is that we all love the music, but I mean, the relationship. I mean, that's that's a hard thing. I mean, you're you become very close yeah. to these people, and you realize that they're they just become like brothers and sisters that you weren't born to and you still have the same sort of brother and sister problems and, yeah, know, it's just, yeah it's strange i just yeah. I mean, that that's the hard thing about it you just think that really if the, that would be the thing that binds you but no it's that's it i'm sorry to hear that but i mean it's, right. it's unfortunate but i'm but i am excited about this new uh new project i can't Absolutely. wait for the new name. Yeah. i saw your uh um your yeah. uh, feel sin uh um original track that you guys released here recently or covered yeah. Charles did. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. good chunky, yeah. uh, good chunky riff he's got going on there. I really like that. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's so much fun playing with those guys again. How did uh, Lake Appalooza thing? It's, uh, I cannot wait. I said I was at Lake Appalooza thing. Did it, did it go well, the, the show? Yeah, yeah. So um, we have a, a lake and just East of downtown Dallas, so it's a man-made lake, and um, you know, so it's basically in the city. And they had an there's an old bathhouse, so it's a real Art Deco building, oh, cool. and um, some people who got some people got together, raised money, preserved this old structure that's amazing, one of the oldest Art Deco buildings um, mm. in the South, and um, so we played that and and. To, that was a benefit for oh, them to keep everything oh, going nice. for them. And, um, and it was fun. It, you know, it's an all ages thing, free, um, well put together and, um, all sorts of music. You know, there was African drummers oh, cool. and, um, acrobats and art. Um, you know, it was, it was, it's a fun thing. So it was a good day out, out at the lake. And that was basically what we considered our goodbye to, Urban Gypsy, hello to whatever else <laughs> right. we're doing. That should be the band name. Nice. We are whatever else we're doing. <laughs> Welcome. Goodbye, <laughs> Urban <laughs> Gypsy. <laughs> there you go. Whatever else. Yeah. But no, yeah, it sounds like it, it, Yeah. But I, I will let you know. We're, we'll post uh, as soon as we, we come up with the name. We did have a name, but it was 
We felt that we were going to be called Keelback, which is a kind of snake mm. that eats toads. Oh, yeah. But it actually, <laughs> oh, nice. um, right. it, uh, it actually turns the, the toad's blood to venom and it <laughs> makes the toad oh, no. kill itself, basically. <laughs> That and is, I was like, ah, "It's a cool sounding name, yeah, though." Too bitter. Just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "I like to this to be more positive," and it sounds like Nickelback. Oh yeah, and, there's you know, that. Too many <laughs> That's, yeah, and, and, there's definitely that. You so, don't want to do that. Don't. Do that. Right. So, um, so we went back to the drawing wow. board, and whatever else this is going to be is going to be something more mm. positive. Yeah, start probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Just wipe the sleek clean and yeah. start over. Yeah. Good idea. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys. You know. so it'll probably be something that happens back to Fort Worth. Something that, uh, that those are what the names that we're looking at now have a, a deep Fort Worth right. tie. Tie it back to your roots. Tie it back to your right. area. Everything else like yep. that. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think this is as good as time as any. At least I, we had a lot of fun. Um, you want to wrap it up? Sound good? Yeah, I did too. Right about now. Yeah, I we can keep yeah, going all night. We, 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 we don't waste your time either. either. We got stuff going on. We we constantly yeah. ramble yeah, for <laughs> ages. Sounds like sounds like some doggos. Well, I'll hop back on once we <laughs> when we have music. I'll hop back on. And oh, I'll that'd be, oh, that'd please, be awesome. Please do and please. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. We would love to we'd love to talk to you more. I want to get more stories. I'm I'm too cur- curious about um road stories. Those are exciting oh, to yeah, me. Yeah. Absolutely. Um I got and, and, and friends, you know, it, or it, we're we're open. Just like I say, we just yeah. like to keep it like a hang and keep it loose and talk about what you're doing. So but thank you so much for coming yeah. on. It, thanks, thank you, thanks, thank, thanks, you thank you. We've had I've, I've had, had a, a great time. I hopefully you're our first guest that we neither yes. one of us knew. So this That's has kind true. of been a new experience for us. Uh, uh, cool. We were both kind of curious, like, oh, what's it going to be like with someone neither yes. one of us knows? I think it went well because you're a Easy. real, a I'm real good. person. Yeah. Yeah. You were great. <laughs> I don't, I'm more worried about that. How, how shitty is I? <laughs> I? I don't know. I think well. I, Not at I all. Well, Not I, at all. It sounds good. All right. <laughs> I, I'm grading your performance. <laughs> thumbs up! Uh, yay. Oh, yay! So, we'll hear some more news from uh, Lisa and and see what the new band name is going to be. On top of other news to come from uh, Lisa in the future. And thanks for coming on. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>